Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today we'll be talking about the AWS Compute Service. Before I start, I'm a blogger and I write my blog at techieandtravel.com. Do check it out and if you like my YouTube contents, please like, share and subscribe it. So let's talk about the compute services. On a high level, compute service is a service that allows you to leverage the cloud-based virtual machines for your workloads. Amazon EC2 is a virtual machine and it enables us to use the servers with our choice of processors, storage and networking. There is another called AWS Beanstalk which is platform as a service and it allows you to scale and deploy web applications and services. And then you have AWS Lambda which enables compute but you don't have to manage any servers. We'll cover these topics in my later videos as well as I'll cover on auto scaling and forget. EC2 is the fundamental core service of AWS and it's a infrastructure as a service. EC2 is a web service to provide any resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It provides you with complete control on your computing resources and lets you run your virtual machine in Amazon proven computing environment. So you can spin your instances in few minutes rather than having to wait for a few weeks or months. And it allows you to scale the capacity both up or down. That means you can add more servers on the fly or reduce the servers as per the traffic that you receive on your servers. We'll talk about few concepts of EC2 such as instance types, root device types, Amazon machine images, and we'll talk about purchase option and cost comparison between different Amazon instance type. So EC2 instance type are basically the processor, memory, and storage that are available to any servers that are launched in that instance type. So it cannot be changed without any downtime. That means if you launched any specific instance type, you have to shut down the server before you can change the instance type. Hence a good choice of instance type is necessary because if you host a standalone service that cannot have any downtime, then you simply can't change the instance type if you need it. Some of the instance types are general purpose. So for most of the workload, a general purpose will work mostly fine. We have compute memory and storage optimized instances. We also have accelerated computing instances for special use cases like machine learning that requires access to the GPU. So the pricing is based on the instance type. That is, if you have any specialized type of instances, then it will cost you more than the general purpose instances. Next, let's look at the root device type. Root device type are the root data storage type for our instances. So for every machines that you launch on your on-premise infrastructure or in the cloud or in the virtual machine, each has a root device. EC2 provides two level of block storage. First is instance store. It's a ephemeral storage and it's physically attached to the host. That means if you spin up a server and if you reboot it or if you shut it down, then data will go away. And the second one is elastic block storage or EBS. This is a persistent storage. That is if you shut down and reboot your instances, data will still be there. It's like a virtual hard disk in the cloud. You can snapshot the EBS volume as well. For most of the work that we do, we will use EBS because it provides a lot of capabilities. Now let's talk about the Amazon machine image. If you are familiar with the Docker image, image is a read-only template for creating your container. Similarly, Amazon machine image is a template to create the EC2 instance. It includes all the configuration, operating system, and data required for the instance. AWS itself provides many Amazon machine images that can be shared across multiple accounts. Custom AMIs can be created as well based on the configuration, similar to how you create a Docker image based on your own configuration. There are other commercial AMIs that are available in AWS Marketplace, which you can buy. Now that we have covered the core concepts about EC2, let's talk about the EC2 pricing options. So we have on-demand instance, 
which is basically the default instance that is created when you launch an EC2. Next, we have options for the resolved instance. Then we have savings plan, we have spot instance, and we have dedicated instances. So let's understand each options. Since we know that on-demand instance is the instance that is launched by default, let's start with the resolved instance. Resolved instance provides discount over the on-demand model, which is the default instance type. But you have to commit it for either one year or three years. It also provides you the capacity reservation for a specific instance type. That means when you launch an instance, it will be available for the entire period you sign the contract. There are multiple types of uh, EC2 reserved instances. The first one is standard reserved instance, which provides you the highest discount, but the caveat is that you can't make any change after you sign the contract. There is another called convertible reserved instance, which allows you to change or convert some of the attributes of the instance, unlike the standard one. And then there is a scheduled reserved instance. As the name suggests, it's typically useful when you have some scheduled time or predictable workloads like weekdays or any specific time when you know that your server is going to have a high load. Then you can use the scheduled reserved instance. So let's discuss about the costing model for the reserved instance. You can either pay all upfront cost, but you have to pay the entire cost for one or three years. And then you have another option for partial upfront where you can pay the part of one or three year cost along with the reduced monthly cost. And then the third option is if you prefer not to pay any upfront, but you will still be getting the cheaper rate than the on-demand instance. Let's say you have a T3 medium instance type and even if you prefer not to pay any upfront cost, it will be still saving 37% over the on-demand instance. If you decide to do some partial upfront payment, then you'll be saving 40% over the on-demand instance. And if you pay all upfront, then you'll be saving 42% over the on-demand instance. Let's say you have a bigger instance type like d2.8x large. If you do no upfront, you'll be saving 42% over the on-demand instance. If you do some partial upfront payment, then you will save 50% over the on-demand instance. And if you do all upfront, then you will save 51% over the on-demand instance, which shows reserved instance pricing is cheaper as compared to the on-demand instance, as well as if you move to the bigger instance types, our saving increases drastically. Now the next option we have for EC2 is the savings plan. This is similar as compared to the reserved instance, but it's not only limited to EC2 like the reserved instance because it supports another service like Fargate and Lambda. Unlike reserved instances, it does not reserve any capacity and it comes in same one or three years term. But if you are looking for the biggest price reduction, you can go with the spot instance. It enables you to leverage the excess EC2 compute capacity that might exist in your availability zone. It can provide over 90% discount over the on-demand pricing. And there are market prices for instance type per availability zone, which are called spot price. And when you request your instance, if your bid is higher than that spot price, then they will launch that specific instance. If you still are not familiar with the concepts of availability zone and regions, then I would suggest you go ahead and watch my first tutorial on Amazon Basics and Amazon VPC. Next, we have dedicated host. Dedicated host, as the name suggests, is a dedicated physical host in the data center that is provided to you. And since it's only dedicated for you, you can guess that it's the most expensive option. So when is dedicated host useful? If you have any compliance requirement or if you have some per server licensing model and you want to make sure that you are abiding by the terms of that license or you have any compliance requirement, then this is the host that you wanna go for. Next, we'll launch the EC2 instance in the AWS Management Console. Here I'm in my management console. I will search for EC2 in my search bar and click on it. 
as you see, it lists all the instances that are running or other information related to the instances. I will click on launch instance to launch a new instance. Now here I get to choose the Amazon machine image that we discussed earlier. There are some that are provided by the AWS as you can see here. As I mentioned earlier, there are some community provided AMIs and there are some in the AWS marketplace which could charge you an extra fee for using it but you can still use it. And then there is another section called my AMIs where we can create our own custom AMIs with the custom configuration like the way we create Docker images. Here I'm going to choose the free tier eligible Amazon provided image for the testing purpose. Now we have an option to go ahead and select our instance types. As we discussed earlier, Amazon provides a lot of instance types. You choose the instance type that is suitable to your needs, but for the testing purpose, I'll go with the free tier eligible t2.micro. Next, I'll click on configure the instance details. From here, I'm telling it to launch one instance, and you have the option to request for the spot instances. As we discussed earlier, if your bid is higher than the spot price, then it will launch an instance for you. But for the testing purpose, I'm not going to choose the spot instance. And then here you have the network section where you see the default VPC is assigned to the instance. That means this instance is going to be created in the default VPC. So I'll be discussing about the VPC in detail in coming videos. But for simplicity, for you to understand, if you create an AWS account, it will provide you with the default VPC. So I'm going to choose the default one for now. And then it auto assigns the public IP. I'm going to select enable because I want to show you a web server configuration in this tutorial. There are other options that you can choose, but for the simplicity purpose, I'm not going to select any of these additional details because you can enable mo some monitoring, you can configure the shutdown behavior, you can choose the specific IAM role, which we created in earlier videos. At the bottom, you can see that you can also provide the user data. You can enter some custom commands that you want your server to run as soon as it starts. Since I'm going to run a web server, I'll pass a script that will install the web service and starts it. As you see, I passed a script to install the HTTPD package and start it when the server is started. So I should expect my server to provide me a default HTTPD web page after it starts. So next I will click on storage. We have EBS volume that we are leveraging for this instance, but we, there is an option to add additional uh, volume if you require. But for the testing purpose, I'm just going to leave the standard then I'll click next to add the tags. And over here, you can add your tag that you want. Next, I'll click on configure the security group. If you don't know what security group is, security group is a firewall for the specific server, similar to how we use IP tables in the server. AWS has a way to provide a security group for each instances uh, through which you can control the traffic that is coming to the instances. As you know, we are going to require the SSS service to log into the server if we want to administer the server. In addition to that, I want to add a rule to allow the web traffic because we are configuring a web server. And as we know, web traffic is HTTP. I would add HTTP traffic on port 80 to be allowed from anywhere. And then next I'll click on review and launch. Here it shows me all the details about the machine images, the instance type, all the security groups, and I'll click on launch the instance. As you see, it asks you to create a key pair or choose the existing key pair. This is required if you wanna log into the server and administer the instance. Here I will create a new peer and I'll give a key pair name as web. You need to download the key pair because later you will want to get into the instance. Then I'll click on launch instance. As you see, it initiates the instance and it's now launching. You can click on the identifier for the instance that will take you to the instance page. 
now you see the instance state is running i can click on the instance and see the instance details in it as you see it has a public ip dns because we created an elastic ip for the instance because it's a web server and we want it to be reachable from anywhere so let's copy the id and let's paste it as you see you get the apache web server default page this confirms that the script that we passed while launching an image is successful so this is how you create and leverage the ec2 instance now if you are using the free version don't forget to terminate the instance click on the actions tab and then to manage instance state here you have multiple options available you can either stop the instance reboot the instance or terminate the instance i'm going to terminate the instance by clicking on change state as expected Amazon provides you a warning asking if you really want to terminate the instance click on terminate and you can see the instance is being shut down so after a few second wait you will see the instance state is terminated so this is it on Amazon EC2 and its implementation and if you like my contents do check out my other stops in my YouTube channel and please like, share, subscribe my channel and put some valuable suggestions for me to improve. And if you have any specific topics, let me know. I can cover that in future tutorial.